I am a DIY girl, and this coffee table was originally white, but I put cement on it to give it a spin. And if you really wanna be impressed, this picture molding, I did that. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC everyone. You are going to love what we've got in store for you this week. Starting with this stunning, architecturally innovative penthouse in the financial district. This stylish apartment is bathed in natural light and filled with vibrant design elements all across its nearly 2,600 square feet. See for yourself. Hi, I'm Frances Katzen, and welcome to this penthouse at the world-renowned 130 William Street, an architectural wonder in the heart of Fidei. And it's filled with color, comfort, and crazy views. It has a distinct style that continues throughout, but it's the light that draws you in. The simplest things are always the hardest to do well, but in this kitchen, I think they nailed it. Italian finishes that are set apart with thick stone and marble, beautiful chevron cabinetry, all custom, making this a work of art for the rest of the space. As you arrive into this living dining room, you are struck by some of the most dramatic views you could imagine spanning north, east, and beyond. This chic room offers two seating areas plus dining room and it still looks huge. And it's a great place to take in these views. But if you want to get a closer look, come and follow me. One of the things that sets this penthouse apart is the fact that you have the most beautiful loggia with bronze detail and some of the best views I have ever seen. Just imagine sitting here having a cocktail, taking in these western views. This loggia connects to all the main rooms, including the primary suite. Let's go take a look. What sets this corner primary bedroom apart for me are these amazing windows. Just imagine taking in these views from your bedroom. There are two closets in this primary bedroom. One for the person who doesn't need to shop that much, and then there's the one for the clothes horse in all of us, plus the makeup table, not to mention nice little seating areas. This bedroom has it covered. And now you have to check this out. Welcome to the final frontier of bathrooms. When you thought there was too much marble, think again, because this is spa level living at another level. Take in the view. Radiant heat marble flooring, dual marble sinks, rain head shower with some of the most incredible lighting set up, and then the marble bathtub that is the bathtub of all bathtubs. You could have two people in this tub, or you could have a party in here. Thank you so much for joining me today. High above it all in New York City from Penthouse 63A, I'll see you soon. No, you go, I'm the listing agent. Stick around because up next we are with Jasmine Ellis Cooper, star of Bravo's summer house Martha's Vineyard, to see what she did to personalize her loft apartment. I'm really enjoying being in my designer girl era, so figuring out what the style looks like for me. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we're inside this stylish take on loft living in Hoboken, New Jersey with Jasmine Ellis Cooper, star of Bravo's summer house, Martha's Vineyard. Jasmine discovered a newfound love of design and added personal touches through clever DIY hacks. The result is an ode to all that she loves, including film, history, jazz, and of course, family. Enjoy. Hey guys, it's Jasmine Ellis Cooper and welcome to my home in Hoboken. 
This building used to be a paper factory, but now it's my one bedroom loft that I do a lot of DIY projects to make things my own. So we've lived here for about a year, and when I was putting the home together, I'm really enjoying being in my designer girl era, so figuring out what the style looks like for me. And we also just had a newborn, so you'll see a lot of mature adult artsy things, but with the twist of a newborn just being here. So you've heard about the kitchen being a chef's dream, but this kitchen is a snacker's dream. So originally this kitchen was a bit dark, and so I really wanted to make it airy and light, so I added this beautiful marble-esque contact paper and flowers. It really doesn't have to cost a lot to really make things your own. So the ceilings are actually 14 feet high, so I really wanted to play with the height by adding this greenery, which is the perfect touch. Because this is a spacious loft, we had the space to add a breakfast nook. So I went with a round table to save space, and as you'll see throughout the home, green is my favorite color, and so I went with these really fun artsy plates and tried to balance between masculine and feminine for us. So my husband's Liberian, and the top photo you have the Liberian flag. I'm a huge Gordon Parks fan, and we both are kind of obsessed with the lives of Thurgood Marshall. If you know, you know. I love this space because of the exposed brick mixed with the light, and it's an open concept, so what more could you ask for? And I am a DIY girl, and this coffee table was originally white, but I put cement on it to give it a spin, and if you really want to be impressed, this picture molding, I did that. I really try to incorporate green whenever I can, from the pillows to the artwork to even the chairs right over here for socializing. My favorite part about the bar card is this stack of vinyl records because I'm such a vintage girly and I'm still looking for a vinyl record player, but for the meantime, this will do. So next we have the bedroom, but before that we have this curio cabinet of my favorite things. From my Super 8 being a huge movie lover to <laughs> the gavel from my husband when he was an undergrad, and the many, many books that we bonded over while dating. So when I found that I was pregnant, our bedroom had to become a bedroom and a nursery. Luckily, we have space for both. My absolute favorite part of the bedroom is this mural. I think one of the main reasons why I love green so much is because it makes me feel inspired and grounded and energized, and I wanted our son to feel the same way. Outside of being a reality personality, I write a lot, and a lot of times I get burnt out from creating, and so what better way to come take a nap than a hotel-inspired king-size bed? But of course, me being me, it always has to have a little bit of green in it. So I did that with this seafoam throw and these deep green plush accent pillows. A nightstand was needed because I'm always reading a book or going over notes for my script. But sometimes you just want to look at yourself and just say life is good. So of course I needed mirrors. As a military family, filmmakers, and reality personalities, life can get pretty hectic. And home for us means a place that you can come home and always be grounded. Thanks for stopping by. Coming up, we are at this pattern-rich home in Pacific Palisades. One of the things I love about starting a new project is the challenge of a client telling me, this is a space we never use. My action item was make this space one of the best in the house. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're with interior designer Melissa Warner at one of her favorite projects, this vibrant abode in Pacific Palisades. Melissa brought unexpected color and pattern, creating a cheerful, witty vibe throughout. See what I mean? Hi there, it's Melissa Warner from design firm Nasuka Warner. I am so happy to see you again, this time at a really colorful and cheerful home in the Pacific Palisades. I can't wait to show you around. This entry door really started it all. The beautiful, clean tangerine color really set the tone for the rest of the space. Our clients love color, so one of the things that really made them fall in love with this home is the fact that it had this amazing tangerine ceiling. 
So here in order to complement the tangerine, I added in some beautiful emerald green, some camel tones, and a hit of fuchsia, which never hurts. I also love an entry that is functional. We of course have put in a console and a settee that's upholstered in a super fun fabric, but it's a great spot to perch while you're putting your shoes on or wait for the rest of your family to get ready. One of the things I love about starting a new project is the challenge of a client telling me, this is a space we never use. That was the case with this space. My action item was make this space one of the best in the house. Wallpaper is such a great way to add some architecture to a room. And by architecture, I mean a real focal point. This orchid color is the perfect complement to the beautiful tangerine in the entry. So how do you put art in a space whose walls are art themselves? Knowing that there was already a lot of pattern on the walls, the really organic spray painting really was a nice juxtaposition. And to complement the piece over the sofa, the piece over the chairs keeps the same color palette, but the subject matter is completely different. So together, they're all just living in harmony. And as we kind of walk through the house, we start a bit bold, and then we get a little bit more serene as we head to the family room. When you have two living spaces in a home, I really like breaking it up so the spaces have totally different functions. The living room, for example, has a single sofa that's a bit more upright and tailored, where in the family room, it's a big U-shaped sectional that's great for watching TV at night or just lounging around the house. The chair in the corner was already used and loved by the client, so we freshened it up with a beautiful poppy fabric and giving the cushions a little more bounce. Overall, the soothing palette in this family room serves as a welcome break to your eye and really tells the story of the family who lives here. Sometimes good design is just doing what feels right. I was just smitten with the color palette of this paper. From the soft green to the punchy marigold to the really soothing lilac, I really started pulling other fabrics into the space based solely on the wallpaper. A pattern headboard against a pattern wallpaper needs a little something to tie it together. This custom colored tape really accents the fabric and the Greek key motif grounds the headboard against the drama of the wallpaper. Carrying the colors over from the bed area to the seating area is really key in making the whole thing feel cohesive. This sofa actually tricks your eye a little bit. From afar, it looks like it might be just a standard pattern, maybe a paisley, but if you get up close, you can actually see that it's a whimsical rooster pattern. Although the wallpaper is the real showstopper in here, we can't forget about all of the special details and touches that really make the space shine and come alive. The antique brass nail head on the bench and chair, the starburst pattern on the side table, and even the pattern lampshade. This room is the perfect blend of California casual and whimsy wrapped into one. That's the end of today's tour. Thank you so much for stopping by. I had so much fun showing you around. I will see you next time. Bye. Coming up, we explore this elegant renovation of a classic townhouse in Murray Hill. You can saunter all the way over to your mirrored bar where you never have to drink alone. Do you prefer shaken or stirred? We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back everyone. Now we're in Murray Hill at this meticulously renovated townhouse that blends old New York architecture with contemporary living. It was originally built in the late 1860s and spans 3,000 square feet spread out over four stylish levels complete with beautiful city views. Check this out. I'm Ian Slater, I'm the founder of Trovit Compass, and today I'm gonna to tour you through this Murray Hill single family house at 130 East 38th Street. Let's head on in. One of the great things about a townhouse is that you greet your guests on the parlor floor. The house was first built in 1869, a full 100 years before the moon landing. And it has been recently bought and fully got renovated by famous designer Adina Conway. And you can sense the custom design in every inch of this house the moment you walk through the front door. Just check out the walls, the floors, and the light fixtures throughout the whole house and in here. Here we are in the living room with plenty of room to entertain in front of your gas fireplace. Or you can saunter all the way over to your mirrored bar where you never have to drink alone. Do you prefer shaken or stirred? One of the standout additions in this renovation was this amazing staircase. It opens up the space all the way to the top of the house. While downstairs there's a rec room with a huge skylight, we're going upstairs. 
Now if your friends are like mine, they show up hungry, and this light-filled floor is perfect for cooking, hanging out, and dining. It has a waterfall center island, a two inch thick marble countertop, and a who's who of top end appliances. And not a dime was spared on the design of the kitchen, all the way down to the buster and punch light switches and cabinet hardware. And to finish the space off, these two beautiful vintage pendant lights. This dining table with room for six is oriented along this wall of windows. The floor has northern and southern exposure, allowing for a well lit brunch. And from your windowsill, you can take in the views of this beautiful landmarked Murray Hill Townhouse Street. The primary suite comprises the entire third floor of the townhouse. It is designed as a cozy and sophisticated retreat from your city life. It is filled with light and both spacious and comfortable. On the southern side of the floor is the four fixture primary bath. You can see special attention has been paid to the materials in the bathroom, from the Casablanca mosaic floors to the Italian wall tiles. On the next floor are two guest rooms and an additional full bathroom, but I'm gonna take you up to the roof. If your friends are again like mine, they like to get a little bit of sun. And what better place than this top of the world roof deck? This is the perfect place for eating, drinking, hanging out, tanning, or gardening with landmark views of New York City's skyline. This is also the perfect place to end our tour of this one-of-a-kind Murray Hill townhouse. Thanks for coming and I'll see you on the next one. Coming up, we are at this very original artist loft that's a throwback to old school Soho. We'll see you in just a bit. Welcome back everyone. While New York's Soho neighborhood may now be a mecca of fashion, it was once a mecca of art. And this very unique loft right on Prince Street is a throwback to that era. Artist Michael Somaroff created the space as a livable sculpture. And it's filled with genuine surprises at every turn. See what I mean? Hey, welcome. It makes me really happy to have the opportunity to share this loft with you. It became apparent to me that the space is not just decorative. Like everything that civilizes us, it's actually on some level an extension of art. The architecture that you find here is the architecture of religion synthesized with science. We don't think of these two disciplines as being something that you can put together. That tension becomes the motor behind a lot of the designing that's been done here in the space. I believe many of the objects that we live with today represent some of the highest human aspirations. We don't really require a chair to sit on. We could use a rock or a tree stump as we once did. So it's fascinating to me that we have an inner need to create a chair, which in my mind is, is essentially a sculpture. One of the things that constantly is commented on when people are here is everyone will say, wow, this dramatically aggressive architecture and its language doesn't feel cold. We really did focus on creating a space that was practical and easy to live in and warm. It was very important to me that we had a dining room that was going to be inspiring to people and something that would invite some kind of awe and a sense of potential when people came together in terms of what we could do together. There was an artist named John Wigmore and he built this whale, which is lighting the dining room. We've had many events here and dinners here as well, often dinner parties serving up to you know, 35, 40 people. And I think it's been uh, a place where people have really uh, had a good time and, and felt very inspired. I, I think it's well known. People gather in the kitchen and there's an island and they sit around and have a drink. This is that but multiplied in its effect. So how are you going to do kitchen cabinets in a place 
where you've built these stratas and floors that fall out of ceilings. This took more than 18 months to custom build this kitchen and its cabinets on site. It's a kitchen with amazing storage space. Amazing storage space. This room, like all the rooms in the loft, really honors living and loving. You have the spotlight effect over the bed, and then you've got a shower sauna. The, this bathroom area was designed like you're stepping into a diamond. You're literally stepping into a shiny cubist painting. You can see how much attention was paid to having good storage and being able to solve those problems before they became problems. I wanted to build something that would inspire. We've had a lot of fun here and now it's time for somebody to come in and create their own creation and be their own artist. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from, which will you pick? <laughs>